No long intro this time. Today we're learning about eight creatures from Slavic mythology, so let's get to it. Ready? Go. Number one, Kikimura. The Kikimura is a female house spirit that's sometimes depicted as an old lady, a beautiful girl, or even a dead relative. She's often seen having animalistic features like the snout of a dog, chicken beak, or goat ears and goat horns. They can either be a good or a bad spirit depending on the behavior of the household. When the house is in order, Kikimura will help look after chickens and housework. If not, however, she instead breaks dishes and makes loud noises at night. The term Mura is a proto-Slavic word that refers to a nightly spirit or a bad dream. In Polish folklore, Mura are the souls of living people that leave the body during the night in the form of wisps of straw or hair or even moths. It's believed they can enter a room through a keyhole and will sit on the chest of a sleeping person and try to strangle them, linking her to sleep paralysis and unexplained deaths at night. There's two main types of Kikimura. The forest dweller, married to Domovoy, who we'll talk about later, or the Russian swamp Kikimura, who's a hunchback old crone that kidnaps children and drowns travelers off-road. The concept of the Kikimura is thought to serve as a reminder of the duties in the household. The Kikimura haunts a house if the children are poorly disciplined, the husband is abusive, or the wife is just lazy. There's even a species of sheet weaver spider named Kikimura palustris. It was discovered by Kirill Yeskov in 1988. Number 2. Domovoy. Domovoy quite literally translates to the one of the household. He's the chief of the house spirits, and he's usually represented as an old, gray-haired man with big, flashing eyes and cat-like features. Sometimes he's human-sized, and other times he's no larger than a teacup. The Mavoy are masters of the house, but can also be the spirit of a departed ancestor. Dom is the Indo-European root for abode or domain, and the Mavoy are believed to protect the home in all aspects, from children to animals. The household are the kin of these spirits, and they share in the joy and the sorrow of the family, and also warn them about future dangers like plague, war, or other calamities that would harm their household. If a family member becomes corrupted, however, by bad behavior or bad language, the Domovoy can change their aspect to become more demonic and angry, and may altogether leave the household to fend for themselves. The only way to reconcile with an angry Domovoy is by sacrificing a rooster at midnight and sprinkling its blood in the nooks and crannies of the main hall. Alternatively, a slice of bread strewn with salt and wrapped in a white cloth can be offered in the hall or courtyard, while members of the family bow towards the four directions and recite prayers to the Domovoy. According to legends, Domovoy are not solitary creatures and prefer not to be alone. If left to his own devices, he may steal items for the owners, much to their dismay. When a house is too quiet, it's believed he can be heard sneaking around the place ever so discreetly. Next time you lose something inexplicably after a trip, ask your Domovoy to give it back. Or if you hear a sudden but quiet noise when no one is home, just take comfort in knowing it's just your ordinary household spirit watching out for you and keeping you safe from dangers like a Kikimura. Number 3. The Banik a banik is a bathhouse spirit, depicted as a short, naked old man with a long beard and either holding or covered in birch leaves, which were used in bath rooms at the time. Slavic bathhouses, or banya, are similar to saunas with an inner steaming room and an outer changing room. In some accounts, the banik may take the shape of a local or even one of the coals used to heat the baths. The banya was also an important structure itself in Slavic mythology, being a place to practice divination it was endowed with various vital forces, and given Abanik's frequent inviting of other spirits, or sometimes demons, Christian images were not to be displayed for fear of upsetting certain occupants. If you disturbed Abanik while he was washing himself and got caught, he'd leap up, chase you down, and strangle you to attempt to teach you a permanent lesson. It was also important for locals to keep the Abanik happy, and there were several rituals in place to keep it so. At night, when a banya was closed down, fir branches, water, and soap were left over for the banik to use with a thank you spoken aloud for him to hear. If anything was to go wrong in a bathhouse, it was usually the banik's fault, or at least whoever upset him in the first place. Because of the way banyas were constructed, though, it wasn't uncommon for them to burn down. Regardless, good news was all you needed to do when rebuilding the bathhouse to avoid a similar fate was to suffocate a black hen 
and bury her unplucked beneath the new building's main entrance, accompanied by a bow and obligatory incantations. Easy, right? It's also important to note that the Bonnock was believed to have the gift of foresight. An individual seeking his counsel merely needed to stand in the doorway of the Banya, exposing their bare back to the spirit, and ask their question. If it was good fortune that awaited them, the Bonnock would approach and caress their back. But if it was bad luck that awaited them, he would claw them instead. Yikes. Number four, the vampire. We all know this one, or at least a version of it. But the vampire we usually think of today was indeed rooted in Slavic beliefs. A vampire is essentially a mythical creature that lives off the feeding of vital force, normally blood, of living victims. They are undead creatures that often visit their loved ones to cause mischief or death in the places they used to live. The term vampire was popularized in Western Europe in the 18th century following a mass hysteria that took place in East Europe, resulting in corpses being staked and individuals being accused of vampirism. Local names vary by region, like Strigoi in Romania, or Bricolacas in Greece. Hope I pronounced those right. Early folklore of vampires has been partially credited to mass ignorance of decomposition and how people tried to rationalize the mysteries surrounding death. The more sophisticated and perhaps charismatic vampire first appeared in 1819 in English writer John Polidori's book The Vampire. But of course, the modern vampire legend takes most of its inspiration from Bram Stoker's Dracula, which he published in 1897. Number 5. The Drekavak. The Drekavak is one of the scarier creatures we're going to cover, derived from the verb drekati, which means to screech. And the name Drekavak literally means the screamer. They were more common in southern Slavic regions and were believed to be the lost souls of sinners or the cursed spirits of unbaptized children. They were only seen at night, usually in the spring, when other demons were believed to be more active. But there were certain Drekovac sightings during the 12 days of Christmas, what were also called the unbaptized days in Serbo-Croatian folklore. Drekovac had many forms that differed by region, but modern descriptions are usually an undead man with canine features. Some Drekovac were more animalistic and would foretell cattle disease, while those that took the form of a child predicted the deaths of people instead. If its shadow were to fall upon you, you'd most certainly fall ill and die a painful death so it was best to keep a dog or a bright light nearby when traveling at night to protect yourself. Spooky stuff. Number 6. Vodianoi. The Vodianoi are water spirits and often called grandfather by locals. Lots of old man spirits, aren't there? Vodianoi have two different versions. The Czech and Slovak version, who is depicted as an old man with algae green skin, gills, and webbed hands and feet and the Russian and Ukrainian version, who is a frog-like old coot with the same gills, green skin, and webbed hands and feet, but he also has a fish tail and eyes that glow like red-hot coals. The Czech and Slovak Vodnik appears as a bizarrely dressed vagrant with a tangled, unkempt beard. They can stay outside of water for hours and are discerned by their wet coat tails. They're quite territorial and will drown intruders who wander too close, storing the souls of their victims in porcelain teapots, which are their most prized possessions, as they display their work with more teapots equal to wealth among Vodniki. Most Vodniki live in ponds and rivers and tend to their homes with care, playing cards, smoking a pipe, or simply loitering in their spare time. When locals want help from a Vodnik, they place a pinch of tobacco in the water and say, Here's your tobacco, Lord Vodnik, now give me a fish. The Russian and Ukrainian Vodyanoi, on the other hand, is much more violent. In addition to his amphibious appearance, these Vodyanoi are usually blamed for local drownings, and when angered, they've been known to break dams, wash down water mills, and drown people and animals. He may even drag people to his underwater home to work as slaves. Consequently, fishermen, mill workers, and beekeepers offer sacrifices to keep the Vodyanoi at bay. Next time you see a quiet pond or a gentle river, don't mess around, or you might end up a victim of Grandpa Frog. Number 7. Lijo. Another spooky one. Lijo are the embodiment of misfortune and evil in Slavic mythology. Lijo are one-eyed, scrawny old women with black hair, or sometimes evil goblin men who live in the forest. The Lijo are normally found in old fairy tales rather than central mythology. The stories always follow a pattern with a few different morals each time. A person always cheats Lijo at some point, 
Sometimes they run away after cheating while being chased and stop to grab something shiny out of greed, but their hands get stuck to it, and they have to cut off their hand. Other times, the person who cheats is attacked with the Liho riding on their neck. They try to drown her, but she floats up while they drown instead. There are also stories where Liho is passed along to someone disguised as a gift. Tales of the Liho were meant to scare little children, especially in Ukrainian folklore, where they are described as bad spirits who cling to your neck. In modern Ukrainian, Liho means woe. Better keep your wits up next time something tickles the back of your neck, huh? Number 8. Mavka. Mavkas are the conniving forest nymphs of the Slavic world. Described as beautiful young women with long hair who tempt men to follow them to their deaths, they're believed to be the souls of girls who died tragically or prematurely, especially unchristened, kind of like a female Drakavak. They live in the forest and can be discerned by their lack of shadow or reflection in water. In rare cases, they have been known to help farmers by driving out wild animals, but most of the time they lure men into the woods and tickle them to death. It's important to note that while beautiful, Mavka's true secret was right behind them, literally. Mavkas have no skin or flesh on their back beyond their bones, or sometimes just a gaping hole of blackness. It was the gotcha moment when they lured a man into the woods to toy with him and then turned their back to reveal their horrifying visage. Mavkas often live together in groups in decorated sheds and caves or just in the woods. They love flowers and often wore them in their hair to appear more alluring. A Mavka is believed to be born to haunt the earth when a soul lives up to seven years without going to heaven. Even after death, it was believed that by tossing up a kerchief on Pentecost holidays and proclaiming the name of the unbaptized individual, followed by an I baptize you, that a soul could be freed from wandering and return to heaven. It's interesting to note how even after adopting Christian beliefs, particularly of the Eastern Orthodox faith, pagan myths simply evolved and changed to fit the new culture, with most still living on to this day. Well, that about wraps it up for today. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one as much as I did. Being married to a Slavic woman keeps this stuff close to my sphere of nerdiness, and I've loved learning about her history and culture from the other side of the world. If you like this video, don't forget to leave a comment about your favorite monster from this list. And lastly, if you haven't already, subscribe for more feudal facts. I could definitely use the help after my last video. I'll see you all next time.